all day like, yeah, all night like, one, whole squad like, yeah, in the field like, yeah, all day like, yeah, all night like, yeah, whole squad like, yeah, in the field like, yeah, all day like, yeah, all night like, yeah. You don't want problems, you don't want smoke, no, you don't want problems. Yeah, you don't want problems, you don't want smoke. Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Philadelphia Eagles. With that, let's get up to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Open back in 2003. Have a look at the link. Lincoln Financial Field where 70,000 are rocking and ready to go in Philadelphia. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago where the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly as they get ready to match up with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white line. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yes, yeah, a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. It's an old school battle in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. The Eagles and the Steelers are underway. This one taken just inside the 10. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their 6'5 quarterback out of North Dakota State. It's Carson Wentz. He didn't have as many throws or plays in college as many of the quarterbacks that were coming out in the draft, but he maximized what he had. Ended up winning two national championships as a starting quarterback at North Dakota State. So first and 10 now from the 30. And the reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Alshon Jeffrey so dangerous even when a defender's near him. He's got such a big body. Ability to run, positions himself well, excellent control. And you're exactly right. Even if people are draped on him, he often comes up with the catch. He really symbolizes what people are looking for in receivers in today's NFL. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. T.J. Watt causing the disruption. He gets the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here 
Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. From the gun, it's Wentz. And he connects with Ertz. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 41-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Shotgun now for Wentz. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's carry number one for Jordan Howard. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That second down play nets a minus four. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Working from the gun, Wentz. This is caught. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Nelson Aguilar, 30 yards. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. Well, that's how they envisioned to get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. lead at 7-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They'll be led out by Big Ben, their veteran quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. He's one of the more exalted quarterbacks in the league, but I still don't think he gets enough appreciation for his ability to read defenses and lead his ball club. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 
First carry for James Conner. He's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Past the 30 to the 32. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Timmy Jernigan with a sack. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will be taken at the 13. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Eagles will have it, taking over first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They go with Howard to begin the drive. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And even 30 yards on a play that began back at the 30. How about this first quarter for them throwing the football? This defense has zero answers for what they've seen so far with the ball in the air. I'm not sure how they're going to change things around, but offensively, I keep attacking. I keep throwing the football until they make me change. Wentz now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. <laughs> On play action, Wentz. He'll hit Jackson complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Give him 30 yards there. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive, and these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way, oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got it? Someone cover it. That type of indecision can open up to even more big plays. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing now is Wentz. 
This will be caught at about the five. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Nice job defensively to hold them to four, and now it's second and goal. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Bud Dupree came out of the University of Kentucky determined to let everyone know that they play football there as well as basketball. A terrific pass rusher off the edge. Howard all alone in the backfield on second and goal. Again, it's Wentz. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams. This is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. Two excellent drives for them to start this game, both ending with touchdown passes. Yeah, they're off and running, even though they finish things off through the air. Got to like what you're seeing from them so far. Being able to maneuver offense, take care of the football, and then ring that bell at the end with, as you said, two touchdown passes. Elliott Good with a PAT, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So the drive there took six plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Roethlisberger will throw. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Able to get seven on that first down pass play, second and three. First carry of the game for Jalen Samuels. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Offensive starters, here they are. David DeCastro, what do you think about him, Charles? Brandon could not have been better trained at Stanford. So well-schooled in the run game and the pass game, and especially in pro principles. David DeCastro could be an all-pro in the years to come. Here we go, here we go. Black 20. Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. Powers through, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. He loses four, and it brings up four. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily 
going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this Jordan game moves Barry. on. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is taken at the 18. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. It's time for our player spotlight right now as we get a look at Carson Wentz. And they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes, go routes, right? What's that Why? route you love? What's that oh, route you four love? Verts. Four verts. Four yeah. verts. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Wentz going to throw. Caught by the tight end Ertz. That's certainly one way to beat the blitz. Get it out of your hands quickly and get it to the big fella. Very effective. Saw the pressure, got rid of it, and the completion ensued. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. I'm going back to you. Watch that. Watch that. They fake the give. Now wins. It's brought in by Jeffrey. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards the pick up there. Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Wentz. It's caught by Aguilar. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. And it's, just, it's, just, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. That right, didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> now wins. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 26. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense you know, probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they got hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now Howard. And he's got Rome. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jordan Howard, 26 yards. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. Boy, these guys are off to the races, Charles. 20 to nothing already, extra point pending. Yeah, you always hear that term, they just boat race someone. Heck, it's car race, motorcycle race, plane race, whatever you want. Right now, they are sprinting past them. Elliott now to add the extra point. And it 
is now 21 to nothing. So that drive six plays, 75 yards. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They start with a give to Connor. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And we peek at the defense now for Philadelphia. Malcolm Jenkins entered the NFL as a cornerback in his transition to safety, but still retains his good coverage skills. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. On second down, Connor looking for space. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On third down, Roethlisberger. And he finds McDonald. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 26 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. On first down, it's Samuels. Brought down by Nate Gary. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. Black, black, black. Now it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. This is Johnson, he's got it. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Stop! 
Roethlisberger coming up with a first and ten. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. 21-0, our score after one. play of the drive. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Now Roethlisberger. He gets this one to Johnson. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. A first opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. This is first and goal from about the eight. Here's Roethlisberger. Johnson's got it complete. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Second and goal from inside the five. You ain't going nowhere. Roethlisberger will hand to counter. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. This has been a long drive. You gotta figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Roethlisberger to throw. Now he's got it. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part, 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. A quick pass out to Aguilar. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up, and then some on second and 13. Wins on the give to Sanders. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. The Eagles on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third and 14. From the gun, it's Wins. And he'll hit Jaffrey complete. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. On fourth down, out is the putter, Cameron Johnston to boot it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and ten. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. You would have to think they're going to make it more of a priority to get him the football. You're losing here in the second quarter, and he's been really quiet. I think all we have to do, and it's too bad we can't actually see the actual play sheet now from the coordinator, because he's looking down at that and saying, okay, do I put him in different spots? Do I try and isolate him? What routes do I run? You're exactly right. They've got to get the ball in his hands and get their offense kick-started. He does have the two catches, but pretty quiet so far. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half-field responsibility. Their job stays deep as the deepest receiver in any zone. Read the football and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. Alshon Jeffrey working his way back out there now to help lead this offense. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They run with Howard. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I think Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. The Eagles on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and ten. Working from the gun. Wentz. He's going to let this go deep for... Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. What a first half this has been offensively. I mean, defensively, what do you do when you're getting torched like this? Now, these receivers are absolutely wearing them out. So two thoughts come to mind. One, get some oxygen. You can fill up your lungs a little <laughs> bit. And number two, talk to your guys up front. You need a pass rush to help slow them down. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. On the toss play, Howard. And an alley to run. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Had this game to the last one, and they moved the ball over 50 yards in two plays. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Just like that. Check. Crunch. Crunch. Running with Howard. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And he is caught with the seven-yard line. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Sanders, and he will take this one in for an eagle touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out, and the Eagles able to push further out in front. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone.
Elliott on for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Miles Sanders who finished it off with a touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, couple Let's extra go. yards up to the 27-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, you got a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 27. They start the drive with Connor. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle. And it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. Third down here. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Well, it's looking like another three and out here, and at some point, got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit, and we're not even at halftime. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Jordan Howard and the rest of the offense heading back out there. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. To throw is Wentz. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard. Gonna look deep. And got his man complete. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. Wentz fighting his favorite receiver, Jeffrey, on a big one. 63 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one.
So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone now, Wentz. And that's complete to Jeffrey. 12 more yards there and another first down. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And is not 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. They'll run with Sanders, and the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? And it's caught. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. The Eagles on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. This is third and goal. They'll try to run with Sanders, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. And a loss of three to bring up four. Let's think here. You're still just in the second quarter. Are you taking the three points? I am taking the three points, and I'm just relying on my defense here. Show me I have a little confidence in them, and let the offense know, nice drive. Come back next time. We'll go get six then, but for now, we'll take the three. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. The kick by Elliott is good. And their lead will swell up to 28. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. To the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. you got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion, Anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. He finds his man, Johnson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting Let's from series to series, Let's and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. On first and 10 is Connor. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. They don't need to run another play here before the two minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. 
Throwing on second down, Roethlisberger. He's got the tight end, Vanan. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. And they get to him with a pressure as Roethlisberger goes down. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. They'll look to set up his blockers. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And that will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because, because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Throwing on first is Wentz. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, that certainly changes things. Yeah, I think the thought process is they take this lead into the locker room, run something simple here and run the clock out. Instead, they get the big play. Now they have a chance to increase what they've done in the first half. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Shotgun now for Wentz. It's caught by Jackson. This gain not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Let's wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive, but it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Go, go. 180! Watch the pass! <laughs> On first and 10, here's Wentz. And that's complete to Sanders. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Wentz now to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. 
Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And Sanders has got it complete. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Elliott puts this one through. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's James Conner now as he trots back onto the field. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, oh, don't no. take him totally out of the game. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a round. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one, maybe not the hard-fought battle many had hoped for. This has been blowout city thus far, but still more football to be played. Who knows what could happen? as we send you right back out to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. 
And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. And that'll bring up second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. This is Jackson. He's got it. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. All right, time for us now to discuss Alshon Jeffrey. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. They have the lead here. What well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches, what are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room, because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the, yeah. we've got, the we've got the got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. On first down, they run with Howard. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. To back good plays have them on the move on first Push down. Back. Push him back. <laughs> Throwing his wins. Trying for the tight end. Ertz and it's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long.
Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ain't no such thing as a loss. We taking wins home. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. And now here's Switzer, the target, and he's got it. And down inside the 15, he goes. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. They come out Mike here in the Mike. eye. Mike, Mike. Here we go, here we go. They go play action here on first down. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. From the nine, here's second and goal. Number 53, Mike 53. Man, that's trash. That's trash. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Now they need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Ronald Darby. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. 
And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Here's Wentz to throw. It's brought in by Jeffrey. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Running from the gun with Howard. Stephon Tewitt, the one that got him down. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. At their 48-yard line. Waiting! Check! 55! Here we go, D. Now Wentz on the bootleg. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bud Dupree. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Winston company with some work to do after the sack. From the gun, it's Wins. And he connects with Ertz. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 34-yard line. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. On the handoff, this is Howard. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. This pass complete wins to Ertz. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. They fake the give. Now wins. This is caught by Jackson. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. Okay. 
What's that? What's that? 98 to Mike. Stay with your man. What's that? On first down, Wentz. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and 9. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. And that is caught. It's Aguilar for the Eagle touchdown. Three touchdown passes now for Carson Wentz as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Elliott now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A 10-play drive that time, and it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. They'll run here with counter. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Roethlisberger now off the bootleg. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. So one quick easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far.
So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. We're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Jordan Berry now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? Who? You and me, <laughs> trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. will be fairly that, clear that is by the one time positive. we have to leave the booth. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 20. A give to Howard running left. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second and nine now from the 21. He's coming, he's coming. They go with Howard again. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the plays we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Hey, tight, tight. Now Wentz on third down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Cameron Johnston now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side <laughs> because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The last run got six, now second and four. We got to get the ball, D, get the ball right here, let's go. <laughs> they go draw play, this is Samuels. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Mike, number 53, Mike, 53. 
Now whistles here before the snap, and it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down, Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Black, black, black. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. Johnson's got it complete. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster, complete. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On second down, Samuels. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped to the backfield. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And that is incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's shift now and discuss Deshaun Jackson. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Go, go. Hey, man, hey, man. Watch the boot. Watch the boot. Another run with Sanders. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. That's a gain of four. Brings up third and five. Here we go, here we go. Waiting. 98 to Mike. It's a party now. What? It's a son. To throw his wins. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. An eagle first down there. Wins to Ertz. And the names that end in TZ. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Wentz now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. Now Howard. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Wentz now to throw. Now he's flushed out left. He'll try and run it. Wentz can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. So the youngster able to use the legs to pick up the first. And one of my pet peeves when they see this guy play, when Carson Wentz takes off running the football, I always hear people go, oh, he's sneaky athletic. No, he's athletic. Watch him do it. He's an integral part of the quarterback run game, and he gets it done very, very well. Yeah, you don't like sneaky athletic, do you? That's no, just kind of a jab in the back. Yeah, not when it doesn't apply. I think that's a stereotype that needs to be broken down for him. On first down, Howard. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Here we go, here we go. Again, it's Howard. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. On third down, they turn to Sanders. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. 
And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 from back at their own 10 yard line. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. The Steeler Black offense three. here about ready check, for their next check. drive. And able last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. He got 29 yards that time. Now they have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? and 10. It's Roethlisberger. He'll get that one complete to Connor. And all the way down inside the 5 to the 4. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal. Expect them attack right here on this play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized. 
executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Ben leaves to counter on the draw, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll make it third and goal. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Here's Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin fourth quarter. You're going. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Boswell's kick is good. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. So he remains perfect three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. Successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jordan Howard and the rest of the offense heading back out there. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive, and this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They'll run on first down. 
It's Howard, and he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it, because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. From midfield now on second down. Wentz caught by the tight end Ertz. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 38-yard line. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> yeah, that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. This is Howard on second down. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing him further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.